As negotiations continue on Capitol Hill to reach a new stimulus deal, millions of Americans continue to face economic hardships related to the coronavirus pandemic. New data from the Mortgage Bankers Association's Research Institute for Housing America, which has been following the financial impact of the pandemic, finds for the month of September over 6 million households did not make their rent or mortgage payments, and 26 million individuals missed their student loan payment. Joining me now on Skype to talk more about the nation's economy is Joel Griffith, research fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Joel, welcome back. Always so good to see you. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on the new stimulus proposal, but first I want to start off by taking a look at where you think the U.S. economy stands overall. It really does seem to be a mixed picture here. Retail sales rose in September, but there are still millions of people out of work. Your thoughts? Oh, there's no doubt that the economy is snapping back very sharply from the pandemic lows. But as you referenced a second ago, this recovery is very uneven, not just when it comes to different sectors, but also state by state. Um, states that have allowed their, their economies to reopen are faring far better than places like Illinois, New York, and California that continue to suppress business activity and basic um, life, such as school or going to church. If you look at uh, communities, for instance, in Utah and Idaho, Many of those communities actually are under 3% unemployment. They're back to an economic boom. But across the border in California, you have unemployment that is approaching 25% in some areas. So this really shows that in order to have a full recovery, we need to actually allow our economy to fully reopen. We need to follow in the lead of governors in Georgia and in Florida that are allowing their people to go back to work, go back to school, and get on with their lives. Well, Joel, as we know, a deal on Capitol Hill really is crucial for those Americans who are struggling financially. That said, how important is it to shoring up the nation's economy and its recovery? Um, look, we can't keep our um, economy and these local and these states and local governments that have kept their their communities shut down. We can't keep those businesses on life support forever. That's not how we do this. We can talk about having targeted aid to those people that, that need it most in a temporary fashion, but another large scale stimulus is not necessary. It's a bailout to states that have been failing due to their own mismanagement. And meanwhile, you have states like Florida and South Carolina that are returning to prosperity because they're actually allowing their economies to reopen. That's the way to actually fully recover from the COVID shutdown. We are just uh, 15 days into the presidential election, and, you know, it would appear to be in the interest of both parties to get a deal done. How do you think all of this is resonating with voters? Well, if you look at some of the polling data um, that looks at how people are doing now versus four years ago, the majority of Americans are actually reporting that they're better off now, even, even after this, the COVID recession, than they were four years ago. And that actually makes a lot of sense. Right? We had tax cuts that saved the typical family almost $3,000 per year. We also saw a boom in business investment, and we saw a record long stretch of jobs growth. And in those parts of the country that are reopened, we're seeing that economic growth resume. So I think a lot of voters, myself included, we're looking at which candidate, which candidate is going to enact those policies that are going to be most conducive to economic prosperity. And if you look at what was done over the past three years, I think it's very clear that the majority of Americans benefited strongly from pro-business policies, uh, from regulatory reform, and from lower taxes. And each American's going to make that decision for themselves here in a few weeks. Joel, real quick, economic recovery will be front and center for whomever wins in November. What do you think the best course of action would be to bring stability and growth to our nation? Well, this really is is twofold. Number one, a lot of the very positive tax reform that was done uh, about three years ago, uh, many of those cuts are actually set to expire here in a few years. Businesses and individuals need certainty, and it would be in the best interest of economic growth in general and competitiveness here in the United States to make those cuts permanent. But second of all, we have a big spending problem. Uh, you know, this this pre-existed the COVID shutdowns, but it's it's worsened. And sadly, political leaders in both parties seem to be very averse at actually proposing how to strengthen, or I should say, how to um, reduce that spending longer term. If we don't get that under control, we are going to pay for these enormous quantities of debt that we're taking on, either in the form of higher taxes, 
slower growth or possibly longer term higher inflation. We have to tackle those structural deficits. All right, Joel, we will leave it right there. Thank you so much for your analysis. Joel Griveth, Research Fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Thank you.